morning, everyone. Actually, it's almost afternoon now, isn't it? We've got a little bit of a wobbly desk up here. My name is Lynn Snodgrass. I'm the CEO of the Best Darn Chamber in the Pacific Northwest. And if you don't believe me, ask the 508 members a record high um, that we now have. So thank you. That's really cool. We've never had 500, and we've had over 500 for two months in a row, which really is a phenomenal. It, some of it's the economy, yay economy, thank you very much, but a lot of it is the confidence they have in our board, in what we're doing as a chamber. And in order to make um, programs like this happen, we have sponsors. And I'd like to introduce our presenting sponsors. We have two presenting sponsors. One is Portland General Electric. Dean Funk, thank you very much. Please thank all of your people above and below for that. And Riverview Community Bank, Larry Schwartz. Larry came early today. If you come on a regular basis, he usually waits till I'm ready to announce him. And then he walks in the door to the um, applause. So thank you, Riverview Community Bank. We appreciate you. We also have stakeholder sponsor, Gresham Barlow School District. They're busy digging holes and tearing buildings down right now. And Metro East Community Media. Thank you, Keith. We missed you last month. You had a birthday, but thank you for coming back. And um, just as a reminder, I'll do this twice, but there are replays, um, a replay list on the on the registration desk on your way out, you can grab one and listen again to all the great stuff that you're going to hear from our speaker. I'd also like to recognize the elected officials here. Do we have any school board, elected school board members here? Can you wave if you are an elected school board member? Not so. Water district, anything? Okay. We do have two council members here. One is the council president, Kirk French. Thank you, Kurt, for being here. And Carolyn Eccles. <laughs> Today is your birthday? Today is your birthday? How old are you? How old are you? Politics and politicians. A straight, easy question. How old are you? 69 years old. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear old French. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much for sharing that. Okay, I didn't know that Carolyn told I knew. So this is between council members. I didn't, I'm just doing what I think I'm told. So I mentioned earlier that we have an amazing chamber board, and we do have an amazing chamber board. I just introduced one of the amazing chamber board members, and that's Carolyn Eccles. Thank you, Carolyn, for being a member of our of our group. And I um, introduced another one earlier, and it's Dean Funk. Dean, thank you. And he's also part of the Government Affairs Council, so thank you for being a board member as well. And I have two other board members that are here today. Warner Allen, and there's not enough time to talk about him, and he'd bill me by the hour because he's an attorney. Warner Allen, right here. <laughs> And our recent past president, Sue Piazza. Thank you very much, Sue. Bucket list travels. You know, it's a little hot outside, but she's got a great deal on a Fuji trip. Fiji trip? Not Fuji trip. Fiji trip. Fuji or apples? Fiji is fun. Okay, there we go. So if you haven't, oh my gosh. The last thing you want to do is forget to introduce a board member that owns Inc. by the barrel, Steve Brown, Pamphlet Media. Thank you. And you know what? It's right here on my cheat sheet, but I still forgot it. Steve Brown, thank you. And you're a great board member, too. In fact, you're probably the best board member I've ever had. <laughs> he was just... He was just responsible for a very fun community event at, in Sandy, the Sandy Mountain Festival days. So he, he has so much power, he can close down highways um, for parades. So Steve Brown, thank you very much for what you do for the community, and you're a good board member. So today is an All-American Day. If you can't tell, red, white, and blue. I wore red, white, and blue today. Um, the table settings are red, white, and blue. We've got hamburgers, hot dogs, potato salad, watermelon. And if you look, there's a little apple, not apple pie, but some of the desserts have apple in them. An American's pastime, as I've been told, is baseball. It passes a lot of time, but um, that's a little humor here. Um, but baseball is a pastime. And appropriately, the table settings are singing to you. There is peanuts and Cracker Jacks. And so I've been told that Jarvez will sing the seventh inning stretch, take me out to the ball game all by himself. Jarvez, are you going to do that for us? 
No, never mind. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> yes, Michael. I learned an interesting fact about practice. Is it important? It is. Okay. You want to share it? What's the dog's name? On the Cracker Jacks? Cracker. That's what I said. Bingo. Jack. Bingo. His name is Bingo. And why is that? Jack and Bingo. Really? Yes. Okay. That was important. Yeah, that was really important. Okay. But it was wonderful information. And next time I play trivia, which will never happen, I will use that if I get that question. So we're going to root, root, root for the home team, even if the home team is Portland, because Portland could potentially be the home of a major league team. We're going to hear a little bit about that pretty soon. With that being said, I want to introduce the chair of our Government Affairs Council so that he can then introduce our speaker for the day. So Brian Lessler of PDG Construction Services. Brian, would you come on up and introduce our speaker? Yeah. Applause, 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 applause. And you have yours. You. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. I think I got all the corn out of my teeth, so, <clears throat> but I'm at a distance where you can't tell, so it probably doesn't matter. Um, I had the, uh, the privilege of uh, sharing childhood duties, uh, raising kids uh, about the same time that our guest, Dr. Lynn Lashbrook, and his beautiful wife, Liz, who's sitting at the table over here. Uh, <clears throat> so they were, their kids and our kids that kind of went interchanged, went to Gresham High School together. So it's really nice to see you guys again. And Liz, I'm, great. I'm glad that you're here. So we have some stories we can pass back and forth. So it really is a pleasure to have uh, Dr. Lynn Lashbrook, a long time Gresham resident with us today. Dr. Lashbrook is the founder um, and president of Sports Management Worldwide, a sports agency and an online sports career training school. <clears throat> he made a few jokes about Trump University. I'm not going to get into that. No. <laughs> Be before becoming a sports agent and consultant, he spent 20 years in college athletics as an athletic director, uh, advisor, and a coach. <clears throat> His roots might have started in Kansas, but his impact and influence is most evident in Oregon. He has had ties to Eastern Oregon University, Western Oregon University, Pacific University, and of course, Oregon State <clears throat> University. It's not a college anymore. <clears throat> if you watched football, chances are you have witnessed some of Dr. Lash Brooks' clients, um, Jerry Rice. <clears throat> Randall Cunningham, Refrigerator Perry, just to drop a few well-known names. But we're not here to talk football. We're here to talk about baseball. Dr. Lashbrook began spearheading an effort to bring Major League Baseball to Portland back in 1997. The result of those efforts turned into a revitalized Civic Stadium. The result of those, I'm sorry, the major uh, the Major League might not have landed there, but the stadium improvements are now the home of Major League Soccer team, um, obviously our beloved Portland Trail Blazers. I think Timbers. Or Timbers. Well, them too, Timbers. How am I doing so far, Lynn? Your turn is about. We love the Trail Blazers. Corn. So Major League Baseball is still a strong possibility for the Portland market. Will a team come here? Where will they play? Why should the Gresham community and business owners even care? Dr. Lashbrook has a previous consulting role in the newest movement for baseball. Let's hear from him what he thinks will happen, when, and where. Please welcome Dr. Lynn Lashbrook. I'm glad they have stairs up here. Good to see you, Brian. Good to see a lot of you. Uh, Michael Patrick, uh, many others. Uh, my wife, uh, Liz, partner in my company, and also my wife for 20 years, 20 plus years. And uh, Alyssa Rutherford is my top associate at Sportsman Where White. She drove all the way out today. Believe it, you can come from Portland to Gresham. And uh, so let me get right to the, um, th there's a lot of, 
When I came to town, you have to, I have to back up. I grew up in Kansas City, which is much, much smaller than Portland. Um, I started playing catch with my dad at five years old, and I've never left sports. And um, growing up in Kansas City, there weren't that many people at the old Kansas City A's game, but I started going right field to left field, and I ended up with 13 foul balls in three years. And there's reasons for every piece of my story. So, and I named my son Brett after George Brett. Now that's Kansas City, our good friend that's been to every stadium but Kansas City, how disappointing, but you'll go after this talk. Uh, so I grew up in Kansas City, went to Fort Hayes State undergrad, and uh, then th back in those days it was phys ed and coaching. I went to Springfield College, the birthplace of basketball, and then Northern Colorado, and back to Kansas, Missouri, uh, saw my Royals, uh, the A's left. But to be honest with you, when I moved out to Portland to start my life over again, uh, I was a sports agent, and I moved and fell in love with my wife. and. Um, Nobody was doing anything about baseball. They're trying to save Civic Stadium. The architect, when I was up in Alaska, happened to live in Portland, uh, John Vosmick. And he said, how do we raise some money? And we started raising money. We got a skill model. And that's kind of when we launched Major League Baseball. Dwight James, Colin Coward, and others got involved. Uh, we're trying to get the Expos. And uh, we lost out to DC, but it was a good fight. And the Civic Stadium was saved, became AAA. And then Merritt Paulson came in, has done an incredible job with soccer, which I hated growing up. And now I'm a season ticket holder. And my son owns the Las Vegas Lights, the new franchise uh, in, in Vegas. But that's a whole nother story. But my wife and my two stepdaughters kind of stuck with me. And why are you doing this? And I said, I believe that baseball would be great for the community. We're the largest city. Uh, without a team. Baseball desperately would like to go to uh, 32 teams. They're at 30 right now. And Oakland and Tampa have a baseball stadium problem. And we're large. We're the largest city without a team beside Vegas. Commissioner Manfred doesn't want to go to Vegas right now and be the third wheel or fourth wheel, if you count soccer in that. And uh, Portland's alive and well. The challenge we had after Mayor Katz was getting the political support. And so after we gave up on the Expos, uh, another architect, uh, Steve Fossler, came up with the school district site. Now, by the way, I won't talk to you about sites that are being considered that you may not know about because that's one of the mistakes that's happened over the years. If you go public, you can't negotiate a good deal. So most of you, particularly in real estate, and Brian included, would understand you want to work behind the scenes. And that part, I won't share that privilege with you. But uh, we went across the river, and we started a campaign there. We went down to, uh, as Lynn Snodgrass, you know, we came down to Salem, and we got uh, money for uh, income tax return use for bonding. Worked very hard. Ryan Deckert was original involvement. And uh, we had some success, and we got $150 million uh, set aside uh, for Portland. If a team comes where we generate the tax revenue generated from the payroll, would be uh, go back towards the first $150 million in bonds. So it's no lost money. It's not really taxpayer dollars because we wouldn't have those tax uh, revenues if we didn't bring baseball. So that went well. Uh, the school district site, and then uh, uh, Barry Smith, another architect, came along. And we tried, they, they came up and they called me, the Oregonians said, what happens if the Hillsboro Hops come? Will that hurt your chances for baseball? I said, no. He said, well, what about if baseball, Major League Baseball comes, will that hurt the Hops? I said, no. Uh, Minnesota, St. Paul Saints, all over the world, big cities, uh, big cities will um, uh, support many different levels of pricing and, and teams. And so that was interesting. And then, of course, we've had many mayors since then. And, even Mayor Wheeler, during his uh, primary campaign, he said that uh, we don't need Major League Baseball. We have the hops and the pickles. Now, I love the hops and the pickles and the gray wolves. Uh, that's not the point. Major League Baseball is 81 convention dates of 30,000 people. That's a lot of business for any uh, e e uh, city, particularly with the many hotels we have. And Mayor Wheeler came into my office two days after he said that. He said, look, I can't be out front in that. 
Well, long story, um, Craig Cheek, who's now part of the Diamond Project, uh, he contacted Harold Reynolds, who's a Corvallis native uh, that's a Major League Baseball announcer and also a former player. Harold said, you need to contact Larry Diamato, one of my faculty in our company, the baseball, uh, the Portland, um, I mean, our sports management worldwide, which I'm very proud of. So all along, I've been making a living building my company with my wife's uh, partnership. At the same time, my passion was baseball. And you don't make any money with passion, but I enjoyed it, and my family supported that I could be crazy, and I gave up golf to keep bringing Major League Baseball. So in a way, in a way, I'm stupid, and I know it's a golf course here. Don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> But I'm so passionate of what baseball would do. It was a sanctuary for me growing up. And so um, as we moved along and that uh, kind of lost it after Mayor Wheeler came in, he said, well, I want something bold. And then when Craig Cheek called me and he came into my office and I gave him my Rolodex and we brought in all the consultants and populists and we worked really hard. Um, uh, when the went public, because the media, and I know we have media in here, but the uh, the public, um, when, when Kent, uh, John Kenzano uh, got word that they were meeting, it became no secret anymore. So we started with the public, uh, uh, Portland Public School. Uh, we looked at the ESCO site, it's been bought. And so there, we're scrambling for the site. And in fairness, that's the missing piece. Uh, Major League Baseball, uh, they've had meetings with Major League Baseball. They definitely have endorsed it. Somebody asked me if Seattle likes the idea. I always say we're not a suburb of Seattle. And I was disappointed when the latest announcement came out. One of our very successful uh, businessmen, uh, 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 Tim Boyle, respectfully, he said, we don't need baseball. We can go to Seattle. So there's a DNA uh, psyche out there that really is missing that I can't do anything about. When I was in Kansas City, uh, Lamar Hunt came to town, brought the Chiefs. Uh, Charlie Finley, you that follow baseball closely, he's a former uh, late owner of the Kansas City or the uh, Oakland A's, but he was also the Kansas City A's. So I not only watched the Kansas City A's leave, I also saw the Kansas City Royals by a, a local entrepreneur, Ewing Kaufman, uh, start the Royals. And so I've been blessed with 60, 70 years of experience in Major League Baseball, and I know what baseball will do to a community. So to make a long story short, uh, downtown, we still have some challenges. It's not easy. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Uh, but to be honest with you, why would I keep doing this 22 years later if I didn't believe it's going to happen? I mean, that's futile to do something that at the end of the day, everybody gets the last laugh. And so I'm here because I'm pretty optimistic, even though there's a lot going on behind the scenes of why you should be excited. But I'm more interested in not the propaganda of why we need baseball, people don't always agree. People have questions. And I'm more interested here in uh, the battle that I started. Scott Lester's here, and Scott was helping me put bumper stickers on 20 years ago. I've been doing this a long time. And I promised my two stepdaughters that they could sing the national anthem. I think it's going to be my grandkids if I don't get going here. <laughs> but um, I think there's a lot going on. Portland's gotten bigger. We have a tremendous sports uh, success story with both the uh, Timbers and the Blazers. Uh, unfortunately, and I talked about the ownership in Kansas City, both of our owners are from out of town. Paul Allen's a very successful businessman and owner, and he owns the uh, Seahawks and the, uh, the, uh, the Sounders up there. Uh, Merritt Paulson's been very successful uh, with the Timbers, but it's really interesting who's going to step up to do that, and I think it's going to be an owner from outside, because at the end of the day, there's billionaires that want to own a team. It can be quite lucrative, and if you look at Oakland's situation and Tampa's situation, they don't have a site, uh, and they don't have a funding mechanism. Now, we don't have a site and a funding mechanism. We do have people, but if we ever get site and funding mechanism, then we have something over two cities that already have a team. And so if we don't get relocation, I'm convinced and hope in my lifetime. By the way, I've been spending, I won't tell you how old I am, but I've spent one third of my life, not adult life, working on this project. And that, um, I'm proud of that. There's somebody else that's the same age in here if you're having trouble with your math. But anyhow, <laughs> I really appreciate um, Sue Hughes uh, has been an instrumental in our company with resolutions as well. Karen Johnson's been my uh, neighbor. Uh, we do local printing out here. Yeah, I have an office in Portland. Some days I'm embarrassed. And uh, I just love what Mayor Bemis has done for the community. 
how he addresses the issues, the homeless issues. And I sometimes don't think Gresham realizes how well you're doing in your bright future. I'm very proud. I go back and forth. Uh, but we, these are our friends. Our kids went to school here. And uh, Gresham is kind of misunderstood downtown. And that just motivates me more of how lucky I am to live in Gresham. And we do a lot of business out here. And, and Lynette Landis is my uh, accountant for the last 15 years. And sports management worldwide, I'm not here to sell, to tell you how great my company is, but we started with one student after the Jerry Maguire movie, and now we have students from over 160 countries, over 10,000 alum, and I've kept that quiet because it's a, it's a global company, and that what pays the bills, but every chance I get, I'm working on baseball, and I've been working very hard behind the scenes. Two things that happened that I kind of didn't move forward with the uh, Diamond Project, respectfully, I really want an all-wood stadium. And you might not uh, understand, but wood, uh, they all burn down, including Eugene, because uh, they're, they're not quite fireproof. And so they've come up with new technology uh, called CLT in mass wood. It's fire retardant and uh, it's seismic friendly, if there's such a term. And we're the largest, most resourceful uh, timber industry in the world. I mean, you take the Douglas fir. And when I went across the street to Tom Walsh, my landlord and colleague, I said, laugh at me, am I crazy in Allwood Stadium? That takes us back. If you know, none of us have lived long enough to be in the Allwood Stadium, but that's all we had. And I see all these new stadiums that all look the same. And so the Allwood Stadium, um, I, I was fortunate, Kerry Eggers did an article in the Portland Tribune, and I fell in love with Allwood. And I've talked to people like uh, Valerie Johnson, DR Johnson, they're building an Allwood facility, forestry school down in Oregon State. And uh, they're right next door, the Albina Bank, a block away from my office. They're building the first ever North American 12-story all wood framework building. Uh, they're doing it in other places, but you know, the United States has quite a few rules, but it's revolutionary. And to me, if you talk about all wood stadium, there's people who've never been to Major League Baseball, and I'm sure they want it. Uh, that, that buy into the fact that we can have an all wood stadium. It allows us to conserve our forests. You can't just tear them down and you can't just keep them growing. We have lots of forest fires to feed into my uh, argument. So the all wood stadium is one thing. I don't worry about a local ownership. We are looking for sites and that's gonna be a private discussion because once you surface uh, this like they did with the Portland Public School, then well, we can do better and you just get locked in. And we are competing against time. In the next five years, in my opinion, and I have a, a philosophy in my company called go global or go home. Now in Gresham, we want to buy local, so don't take that the wrong way. But to be honest with you, uh, baseball will grow globally, just like football. We go to the London every year for an NFL game. And the globalization of sports, and the World Cup had over 3 billion followers, and the Super Bowl gets 120 million. So think about what's going on. Baseball is going to move worldwide. In Mexico, even though we have issues today, the day's going to come that Mexico uh, City would be a very good uh, venue. Montreal would love to have a team back. They're making no effort. And so I would say this before I open up. I've kind of been a victim of the media because, oh, he's just all talk. God bless his soul. And I got a chip on my shoulder. And I started my company. We've grown a successful company. I'm proud to be in Gresham where I raised my kids. I'm proud to be here today. I appreciate the, uh, the invite. I think we're going to get baseball. Do I know where? No. Do I know when? No. But I do know that my age, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it. And so that's kind of the exciting time. And lots of issues, but also a lot of excitement. Baseball needs Portland. West Coast alignment. When you watch on TV, I watch my Royals. When they're on the Midwest, the time zone is different for your audience. And so it hurts every time uh, Texas Rangers come to the West Coast. They get more revenue if it's the same time as the Central Zone. So they'd much rather have, um, uh, baseball would much rather have uh, divisions of four and have more playoffs, maybe turn to 154 games the way they used to. And so there's a lot of reasons that Commissioner Manfred has spoken out loud about Portland, and we know that Seattle's not excited about it, but that fires me up. Well, who's Seattle? I mean, you can go up to the games, but, um, and so I think that it's just a firepower. I think our political leadership is not aggressive 
but that's something that we just have to keep overcoming. And I think this group, the Diamond Group, has done a marvelous job of raising the bar. They brought in Russell Wilson, not the billionaire. He's a very good pastor. He's got a good arm, but it's good electricity. But at the end of the day, it has to be a billionaire. Does that billionaire have to be in Portland? No, it does not. And the Jerry Jones of the world and the Mark Cubans of the world and Steve Ballmers of the world, they want to own a professional team where they're billions of dollars. And once we get that um, site selected and our population, we've got some things that nobody else has. And uh, that's what's exciting about it. I could go on forever. I'd bore you. You'd have to leave. Uh, most of you have business. I don't want to hear your problems. i got to drive back down. And you have no idea. You think traffic was bad. They got the interstate closed everywhere. I mean, you, you can spend your whole night in traffic. If we had baseball, it wouldn't be so bad. You have a game to listen to. But right now, <laughs> I'm baseball deprived. And, um, but I'm just proud to be here. It's really weird when they called and said, can we get somebody from the Diamond Project? I was involved daily. They met in my office for two, a year and a half uh, getting started. But when they kind of went, and they didn't really fall in love with wood like I did. And I'm kind of, as you can tell, a little independent. Uh, the universities didn't help me start my company, by the way. Uh, I'm, I'm a capitalist, and uh, baseball is a capitalistic approach. And if we ever bring baseball here, a place to go, uh, a place to bring your kids and your grandkids, uh, it would do so much wonders for our city. And I just, uh, someday I think it's going to happen. And you energize me because you're here and you didn't leave during my presentation. Now, saying all that, I'm a tough cookie. Bring it on. If you don't have questions, you have all the answers. If you have all the answers, why would you come here? That's stupid. So I've got you where I want you. Somebody ask a question. I'm going to ask the first question, oh. then I have Carolyn. I'm okay. right here. So, I love the name Lynn. Yeah, it's yeah. spelled the same way. Right. That's true. We're not related. Go ahead. That's funny. Uh, yeah. Maybe we maybe are. Maybe you are, right. Um, because I love wood products as well. So out in Gresham, does, does it matter where the site might locate for Gresham to somehow benefit from having a major right. league team here? So here's how Gresham would benefit. They want us... Commissioner Manford, they'd love to stay downtown. We got a great downtown. Even with the homeless, we're going to solve that someday. I don't know when, but but we have a great downtown. It's a very pedestrian friend, friendly city. There's nothing like it. I grew up in Kansas City where everything's spread out. So the priority would be to stay local with the, with the light rail transportation. The quality of life and the residual of having that kind of economic boost. Fans in Kansas City, they came from Omaha. They came from Hayes, Kansas, where I spent many years. So it's a statewide entity. In Gresham, there'll be people that stay in Gresham that don't want to stay downtown. And when you look at the rest of Oregon, which sometimes is mis or underrepresented, we think it's great uh, if downtown, everybody benefits. Because Greater Portland includes Gresham. So back to your question, everybody benefits from having a baseball. 81 dates of 30,000 people, just think about it. And the internet national global eye view of what a stadium would get and it's pretty exciting but all wood would be a catalyst for the illumination of this wood product that's as revolutionary it's as revolutionary as plywood was in the 50s if i may i know my stuff lynn okay no thank you um, yeah. great presentation i'm very excited well I'm we're ready. not done yet i'm ready right. for baseball <laughs> yeah there's still time right so when it comes to selecting an owner who chooses that is it the baseball commission or is that the local good question Just curious one of the things that i um i'm i'm not skeptical because i want the, the baseball group has some some uh, so-called uh, people investors i do know billionaires get to the top of the list and i do know that uh uh, met metaphorically, Commissioner Manfred in his drawer has people that like to own a team. But people aren't going to go in and buy Oakland and Tampa without a solution. And if those cities aren't going to fund them, an owner is going to move a team. Either the original owner, a lot of them don't like to leave. Charlie Finley did. Uh, but but uh, So that's the good question. But if you get land, we have population. If you get land, no matter who owns the team, they'll be attracted. Because baseball is desperately looking for uh, ownership in new stadiums. So we do control our own destiny. If as difficult as it is, we're not behind Tampa and Oakland, as crazy as that sounds. Yeah. Yes, sir. Just a second, Joey. Um, because this is being recorded, we uh -oh. need to get you to be recorded. Um, yeah, so uh, speaking yeah, of globalization, so, yeah, global. um, 
English Premier League right. very, was very open to American owners coming in. That was a big step yeah. for them. Is American baseball open to foreign ownership, which I'm oh, not sure exists? I think it's coming very quickly. Uh, you can't, th that's a very good question. And American owners own uh, European soccer teams. And to be honest with you, I told you I, I hated soccer growing up. Uh, and my son owns a team, and I'm a Timbers owner. But let me tell you what happened. The late Lamar Hunt, who brought the Chiefs to Kansas City and started the American Football League and really invented the name, created the name Super Bowl. And I, I got to know him a little bit. And, and uh, so Lamar Hunt started MLS with uh, Phil Anschutz, another guy from Kansas. And they put in millions of dollars to start soccer. And everybody, including me, said it'll never work. I think by 2026, soccer will be the most popular sport in America. That doesn't mean baseball and basketball. That's why everything's going away. But back to your question, I think the day has come where investors, if somebody came in and had the credentials, that we would welcome that. I really do. So that's a great question. Thank you, Joey. Sue? Hello there. Um, so will you go back to and explain a little bit about that $150 million that um, is, is it set aside? And it's, does that give us a, a kind of a leg up um, for an owner uh, picking, picking Portland? Well, it used to be a real leg up. But now these stadiums are coming out 800, uh, $850 billion. A million, excuse me. And so, um, is there a way of getting more? I don't know. Lynn Snodgrass is no more than me, but but Sue, it's a definitely a start. You know, the paradigm has shifted. The idea of a public stadium and the owner makes all this money, there's not a stomach for that anywhere. And we know that. And so, land acquisition, price point, and turnaround time are just as important uh, for that. But we're proud of what we've done over the years down there. I'm not convinced there's not more if we made everything else in the contribution by the owner. Merritt Paulson put a lot of money into the renovation uh, of the stadium, and we're looking for uh, that kind of uh, partnership, if I may. So I think we're very attractive, and we're the largest city uh, without a team, and we're on the West Coast, which is a need for them in the alignment they want to do. Jim? With your comment about the uh, land acquisition, uh, is, a, is the focus on a single piece of property or a group of properties that are in the zone? Great question. And the, the other part of that is how many acres are we really talking about Great for question. the venue and the parking and so on? I do so much better when I let the questions come in. Thank you for that question. The larger the acreage, the more the owner can monetize the village and the condos and the hotel. So think about that. At 12 acres is needed for the footprint of a stadium. Uh, the more acreage you have, the more attractive the ownership's contribution. So 12 acres and the owner has to pay for everything and then infrastructure is not that enticing. So the more acreage, the more attractive the investment, uh, if I may. It's hard to find that kind of parcel. Atlanta, that moved outside the city, has about 60 acres, and they've redone their whole village. Uh, their challenge is they don't have light rail like we do, but the point is that uh, there's challenges out there when you go outside the city, but more importantly, land, the more acreage, the better the proposal. It's a very good question, thank you. Next okay, question. Dean Funk right here has a question. Um, this morning on uh, the Dan Patrick Show, uh, Commissioner Manfred was on the show, and one of the things that he said I thought was interesting in terms of data, just as a stat, yeah. is that kids playing sports, that 12-year-olds, uh, baseball is the only sport that's actually growing more than soccer. So there's a lot of, surprisingly to me, there's a lot of kids who are playing uh, uh, baseball. So that, that bodes well for the future. Yeah. He also said, to your point, that uh, he seemed to suggest that there wouldn't necessarily be a, a relocation, but for the symmetry, um, that um, likely that expansion would be the, the way that would come for for a new city, yeah. and explicitly said that uh, as the first city you mentioned was Portland, and then finally I would just say maybe there's more facts that Yahoo Sports did a handicapping yeah. of. I mean, a lot of us has always thought this is just a pipe dream, just Lynn's pipe dream is all it is, but but in fact uh, um, Yahoo Sports said that they handicapped the cities and Portland was number one by. A, uh, That's nice list, to hear. So. No, no. I, I, and, I, and by the way, I appreciate, I appreciate the topic. I will share, we're in the sports business all over the world. Cricket, rugby, we do every course, and I'm proud of it. And um, the revolution going on in sports with the Internet is 
sponsors want live entertainment. And sports is one thing you don't rewind. Only Sue is the only one I know that didn't watch a game for two days and they rewind and don't talk to her about it, which I hate. But we're going to change her that. So back to your point, baseball is doing very well. And the other point is there's room for growth. For example, uh, Gresham has a vibrant uh, athletic program. I think we need more sports, not less sports. But baseball has to compete with soccer now, or soccer has to compete. And it's good because get the juices going. In the end of the day, I was too small to play football, but I had no choice. I would have played soccer, I know, but soccer wasn't available. Back then it was a communist plot. We've come a long ways. <laughs> My point is the growth of sport and sport business is huge. You ought to go in Europe and what's going on. So there's plenty of, and we're getting the 2026 soccer, and I think it'll surpass all sports. That doesn't mean baseball's not going to keep growing. People need a sport or, a, or an activity, no matter what kind of school system you have. Okay, we have Jarvez, who's the executive director of the East Metro Economic Alliance. Always a pleasure. I had your class in 2004 intro to sports management at Oregon State, and you were talking about baseball back then, and everybody in the class thought you were crazy. And then once, <laughs> and then once the Portland Diamond Group kind of went public, I was like, Lashbrook was right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was the first person I thought of when this came out. Uh, but the, the question I have for you, uh, I mean, outside we have the $150 million set aside and some of those things yeah. going on, uh, and I do think it's, it's looking more and more like reality, especially with expansion. What are some of the other factors that need to go into play uh, that we need to look for, either municipalities or with yeah. uh, the, the state to kind of set the groundwork for all this to happen? And uh, when do we get the All-Star game? Well, I love that. And by the way, it would come sooner than you realize because they like to go to new cities and, uh, you know, whether it's Vegas and hockey or anything like that. And thanks for laughing at me then and still kind of laughing, but not really. And I appreciate that. And Scott Lesser is another student of mine next to me, and he's watched me. And he's one of the few that, besides my wife, that thinks I haven't been crazy. I've been accused. They've tried to put me away a couple of times. But, I've, but I, I think the challenges are, I, I do think political leadership is always an uphill battle. Um, and that worries me. And site, uh, uh, Brian knows this about site selection or site purchasing. The Esco site was bought out from under them. The Portland Public School, which has enough problems already, uh, they're now not sure they want to, you know, they made them a nice offer and offered to put the headquarters in Banfield, uh, the old Banfield Hospital. But so anyhow, you, every time you go public, and remember, the Diamond Project, the Diamond Group did not want to go public. It was one of those public records deals. And I learned a lesson going through that is they moved on. I'm proud of my involvement, but I also think there will be more than one owner bidding. I know in D.C. they had two ownership groups going after it, and then the Lerner family came in and bought them. And so I think owners, potential owners, are watching every move. And sometimes you're the bleeding pioneer, and other times you're leading pioneer. I'm trying to do both. I'll be a bleeding pioneer, and then I'll shower, and I should be a leading pioneer someday, if I may. So that's my point. Okay, Larry, then Amanda, did you have a question? Okay, Larry first, and then I'll come over there. Hey, Lynn, thanks. Thank you. I was kind of sorry to hear that uh, ESCO was sold out um, about 90 years ago. My dad played at the old Vaughn Street Stadium, uh, so that would have been kind of cool. But we talked about how many acres is needed for a stadium. How many people does that uh, stadium house? It's a great question. And uh, I loved ESCO. If you look at the story, Vaughn Street was put there by, I think, the St uh, Swigert family to get increase in um, the light rail or a streetcar in those days. And so that's how Vaughn Street, and I thought it'd be a perfect site, particularly in Allwood Stadium, which is really the, uh, the, the, the compelling issue for me or the, uh, it was when I saw that you could do an Allwood Stadium, I thought ESCO would be a perfect place. Uh, to do that. So the acreage, are you asking how many acreage? No, capacity. Oh, capacity. I, they're doing 28 in Tampa. I don't want any bigger than 28. Boston Red Sox have done well. I think they've expanded to 33. And I will bring up one other topic. You know, everybody says you got to have a dome state, which is about $250 million. And just for a moment, I've never been on a rainy day driving down the road where people weren't playing golf. I mean, literally. I went to the World Series in Kansas City. Guess what? It poured down rain in the seventh inning. The only downside of that, they don't sell beer after the seventh inning. But make a long story short, <laughs> I bought a $3 poncho 
and went back out and watched the rest of the game, even when it was drizzling. It's a joke, and I think there's a team, they've done real well in baseball, Oregon State Beavers, kind of well. They, they, don't, they don't have a dome, and they sell out, and I just don't get it. And so I'm kind of against the grain, no pun intended, the wood uh, joke. But I think uh, we need a small stadium, and I'd rather have a tough time getting a ticket and get people excited. And you know what? More and more people are watching on TV. I watch all the Royals games on my mobile phone. The idea that sports can be watched, do you realize how those black and white TVs that many of you saw come into your house? The clarity today, I, it's bizarre. On my phone, I can watch the Royals and enjoy it. And, and so that's my point. I don't think size of the stadium, the larger, is really uh, not as efficient. And plus, we're talking money. If I'm a billionaire, I want a good deal. I don't want, you know, I don't need, uh, you don't, we got a roof down at, um, we don't have a roof, but down Timbers. And some of us sit under, some of us don't. But nobody leaves the game when the Timbers are playing. Yeah. And it rains. We're tough people. Now why all of a sudden do we have to do what everybody else does? Keep Portland weird is my point, okay? <laughs> hi, Lynn. First yeah, hi, thanks Amanda. for coming out. I think you remember all of Amanda? Us, <laughs> yeah, all right. I think all of us wouldn't be here if we weren't somewhat in support of what you guys are trying Thank to do. You. Um, so from a small business standpoint, what can us smaller businesses do to help support the project? Well, I um, I've kept my website, mlbtopdx.com, and the more emails we get, the more we have. And then the Portland Diamond Project also has there. I've given them all my emails, but I wanted to keep my website so I can remain a consultant. I put 22 years into this, and I want to still, um, as they've moved on in a respectful way, they've done a great job, I want to keep my independence in case that other billionaire comes to town. I just believe you got to keep looking. And I'm passionate about this. And so uh, the MLB to PDX, is a way I'll convey it over to them but the more email we had about 7,500 uh, the last couple of years Scott remembers when uh, Eric Nimi we put our first website together 22 years ago that was before we even had internet hardly started up but we've come a long ways and uh, if you look at it you'll see the wood product uh, uh, discussion with experts in the field so that's what I would do I, the more emails I get and I've left my business card but uh, e email me if you have any questions and stay tuned would be the best way because once we announce that site, uh, we're going to need community involved. We need 20,000 season ticket holders. So there's nothing to do today. Just give me your email and spread the word. Talk about it a little bit instead of just talking. To have something to talk about, a substance. You know what I'm saying? Thank you very much. Tell your okay, mom. Okay, uh, Neil Jensen, here we go. Excellent. Lynn, got a question about the site. We know about how much land you, you, you need, but as far as where the site's going to be, how far afield do you go? Would you go out to Hillsboro? Would you go to Woodburn? Would you go to Sandy? I mean, how, what's, your, I think, what's your distance parameter? I, I think parameter? when they look at that, they get scared of the traffic, respectfully. Uh, they're still in the pro I'm letting them do that. I, I got my own ideas. That's a very good question. But site selection or even hints would be... Um, uh, counterproductive but I, I, I don't know the world is changing and we'll see but right now uh, the better deal the better site uh, the quick turnaround and the price are all parts of it and those puzzles that piece has not been solved yet but so that's why I'm still here I actually have gone quiet for six months to protect the diamond projects efforts to navigate but I've decided now because it's Gresham uh, this is my day in the Sun and um, no pun intended. And so I'm here to come out. And I'm telling you, I'm alive and well. And some of you asked, what happened to you? I said, well, I took the high road because they wanted to go their own direction. But at the same time, as they struggle, I'm going to keep my independence. You know, Gresham is known, the city of Gresham is known for how quickly we yeah. can turn things yeah. around. In fact, a different diamond group, De Beers, came into Gresham in I part because of how fast we could turn around the site and they're constructing yeah. it already. So you yeah. might plant that little seed okay. someplace that Gresham would yeah. be open to yeah. a major league team. Okay. Michael? Yeah. Hi, Lynn. I was believing everything you had to say until you said that you decided to be quiet for six months. <laughs> and then I kind of got booed <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe that was Lynn's idea. I'm not sure. Liz's idea. I'm not, that was I'm good, not sure. by the way. I, I appreciate These that. These are my so, people out here. I'm real comfortable here. Right? Yeah, I, 
I was super excited to hear that you were you were coming out and sharing with us because I know yeah, your passion behind you. that. This might be a little bit in the weeds and maybe offline, but can you talk to me a little bit about the relationship that the Mariners have as far as the rights, the regional, as far as expansion? Because I know there's lots of dollars. And then two, one other question is, uh, since um, uh, uh, now I can't remember, isn't it? Russell Wilson's relationship yeah. is with the Seahawks, and we know who owns the Seahawks, and we know yeah. who owns the Trailblazers, and I think there's a B in front of his name as well, as far as a money source. Could talk to me a little bit about the Mariners' relationship, because I know that's kind of a challenge. So as I, I know told, the site is. No, no, is I told you, we're not a suburb of Seattle, and they've always not been excited, because they get about 20% of their fan base, so you're absolutely right. But Philadelphia is pretty close to New York and D.C., and Baltimore is close to D.C. Uh, baseball needs another city, and so that can't stop it. Their TV uh, deal is not that attractive, and having the dynamics... And, you know, by the way, Sue knows this with the Timbers. The rivalry of Seattle and Portland is unbelievable. The Sonics are coming back. They're building Key Arena. The first spring hockey should be awarded this fall. And then the Sonics will come. We'll get that Northwest rivalry. And as far as uh, Paul Allen, respectfully, besides coming to the game, I don't think he spent a lot of time in Portland. Uh, and, and so that's respectful. And so we have to do it ourselves. But, boy, if you ever want to get me fired up and say, well, what about Seattle? It's a moot point. I don't care about Seattle. I love it. My daughter's at University of Washington. I love Seattle. I love going up there. Uh, but to be honest with you, we're our own city. And we, how Kansas City can have Major League Baseball for 65 years, smaller than Portland, and we're sitting here worried about Seattle. Kansas City didn't worry about St. Louis. You know what I'm saying? Anything yeah, else? We've got time for about two more questions. Okay. Anybody? Okay. Councillor Eccles again. Go. Do you have some property? <laughs> I wish. I wish. Um, this is a bit far field, and I've only got half of it understood. But I've heard talk recently about trying to figure out a way to speed the game up uh -huh. so Good it's question. more appealing. Do you know anything about that? I do. And it's funny. Because the other day we were going to Timbers game and my wife said, wow, I love soccer, an hour and a half and you're done. <laughs> and then I took her back to Omaha, part of my bucket list for a game, and it was four hours, okay? And she was like, I don't know about this baseball. Five hours, excuse me. So here's my point. They might want to speed it up a little bit, but I never forget the rain delays. I never forget leaving in the seventh inning. So I think you don't have to stay the whole game. Come and enjoy. Go to dinner or come late. I think they're caught up in trying to be like somebody. Now TV is concerned about it. So I re and they do take too long time in and out of the – and they're speeding it up that way. But just I don't think it's a monster uh, issue that everybody claims. Every sport has its advantage. I always make fun of the Blazers. If tied with a minute left, I can get in my car and drive to Gresham and still watch the end of the game. <laughs> so don't tell me our problems. They got problems, too. You know what I'm saying? Last question. And by the way, I dressed up today in a coat, even though I don't have socks on. And I can't wait to get this coat off, by the way. And I noticed not many of you dressed up like that. So I guess that's a compliment, but I'm the dumb one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one last question. Anybody? So you kept referring to Scott. Did you introduce Scott? Lesser. Scott, Scott, Scott Murray, works. Um, Hi, Scott. Scott and Brett, his partner. Scott, give me the name of your company. Uh, Tribune Media. Tribune Media, and they do a lot of our advertising, and uh, just like Sue does our graphic arts. And if you really, besides baseball, SMWW is kind of a cool company. We're down in the Pearl, and if you ever come in, I'll show you the 13 foul balls and why I've been so confident we're going to make it happen. I've got a lot of history down there that I can't share, <laughs> but if you're bored in the Pearl and you can't get around a homeless and you need a break, come on upstairs, okay? <laughs> Again, uh, Lynn, and uh, thanks for reaching out to me, and Larry, uh, what a thrill for me to get back out. I'm fired up, and I'm going to work harder than ever and hope to come back soon when we have that announcement, because that'll be even more fun, okay? There you go. Let's thank Dr. Thank Lashbrook so much. Am I excused? You did great. You can take your jacket off. No. Right. Somebody wants to sing. Da 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 da. Oh. So he's a Gresham resident. If anybody says we don't have energy and expertise in this town, they have no clue what they're talking about. 
So I want to thank all of our sponsors again, Portland General Electric. Dean, thank you very much. Um, if we get the baseball diamond, PGE can light it up, right? Riverview Community Bank, you can do the banking. You can either have people bank on their way in and take all those visa things, or the billion dollar owner could start an account with you. Um, we do need school children to play baseball, so Gresham Barlow School District, thank you for your sponsorship. Metro East Community Media, I have no clue what you'll be doing. You'd have to pack up and go downtown or go wherever this field is, but thank you for your sponsorship as well. We have some amazing upcoming topics. Metro Housing Bond is going to be in September. We're going to have a candidate forum. August is a surprise. You're going to have to read the newsletter. The newsletter today, My Seats to Plant, was very appropriate. It says, I always lose my temper, my car keys, my memory, and my patience, so losing weight should be a piece of cake. <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. So be sure and pick up your replay schedule if you would like to listen to Dr. Lashbrook again um, and laugh the second time because he's quite humorous. We, he talked so fast, I couldn't get some of them. Doctor, that was really cool. Um, the Gray Wolves have a tri-local um, next Tuesday, a week from today. So the Gray Wolves baseball team, it's a chamber event. So bring your family and come out to the Gray Wolves game. The art festival is this weekend. And be sure and pick up one of Dr. Lashbrook's business cards. Um, he's a wealth of knowledge. You may not be an athlete that needs an, an agent, but you may know a billionaire that could help us get the, the <laughs> team here, and he would appreciate that, obviously. So if there's no more questions, I'm letting you out early today, and I want you to keep track of the fact that I did that for the next time I'm late. Have a great day, and drive carefully.